It's Friday, October 13th, and Apple fans with $1,000 to burn are counting down the days until Cupertino releases the iPhone X, or iPhone 10, the new Halo phone that features an OLED screen from top to bottom with almost no bezels, although it could be fair to say it has ears. Our friends over at BGR have been poking around and found some interesting new features, most notably around how Apple was able to create that top to bottom display. Apparently, Apple folded the bottom of the display around itself in order to connect it to the display controller, which runs the display. But since a controller takes up some display room and there was no room at the bottom of the phone, they came up with that interesting solution. But it begs the question, if they can make the OLED display do a 180 like this, would it not be fairly easy to make a curved or bendable iPhone? Sure seems like it now. Apple also changed up how notifications are displayed on the iPhone X. According to Phone Arena, the content of notifications will only display if the Face ID system recognizes your mug. Otherwise, it just shows you have a generic notification. A little privacy, please. We appreciate it. The iPhone X will quickly disappear from store shelves on November 3rd. In case you missed it, virtual reality gear just went from expensive and somewhat cumbersome to cheap and wireless in like a year. Pretty amazing. Facebook-owned Oculus recently announced their upcoming Go headset, which they say will cost just $200 and be entirely self-contained. No tethers to spendy computers needed. It won't be out in time for the holidays, sadly, with the debut set for early next year. So what's under the hood? Official specs haven't been released, but we have a good idea of what's going to power the Go system. A device this size is essentially a specialized smartphone without the phone part. So it makes sense that a smartphone chip like the Snapdragon 835 or maybe something a bit newer will power the headset. We do know the view screen will be a dense 2560 by 1440 pixels, further reducing this screen door effect that has plagued first gen headsets. And motion tracking will be done from the Go headset itself using a three degrees of tracking system or 3DOF, a new acronym you should probably learn ASAP. And it won't just be for gaming either. The Go will also support apps including Facebook 360, Hulu, Netflix, astronomy apps, and more. We've got a full rundown on what could be a breakout VR system that finally cracks the wider tech market. So hit the link for all the details. Here's a quick hit for car fans and Corvette fans in particular. Is Chevy looking to produce a mid-engined VET? Well, it sure seems that way if these spy shots are any indication. Autoblog's tireless photo spies caught what appears to be a heavily camoed mid-engined VET trolling the streets of, ironically, Cadillac, Michigan, where the test driver apparently made a pit stop at Mickey D's where these shots were snapped. Rumors of a mid-engined VET have been around for decades, but it looks like GM is serious about the project now, and there could be a new engine in the mix as well. Corvettes currently use powerful but technically archaic pushrod V8s, but the new car could transition to a double overhead cam plant, which would improve fuel economy and also boost power. Variable valve timing as well? Sure, why not? But we're only guessing on that part. Anyway, hit the link for the whole story and start saving up for your dream car. That's it for DT Daily today. Be sure to check out digitaltrends.com for all the latest tech news and our Facebook page and YouTube channels. And tune in live at 2 p.m. Pacific today for Between the Streams, our entertainment podcast where we'll go fully in depth with the new Star Wars trailer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.